I mean, this this opening is very strong against Lotus this Breach. Is, this is kind of where you got to be, because Lotus Breach is, I would say, more of a turn four combo deck. There's another Temple of Mystery comes down. So back over to Wasburn Moses. I mean, honestly, this is a turn four kill if you just fire at Mutavault twice. Right. You fire at Mutavault, you attack. You know, the, the blade will also work here as well. Put the blade here on the Serpent. If you can get it underneath there, an attack for this is eight. Yep. This is just way too fast. Another Ghost Fire Blade, and yeah, I think, uh, I think it's gonna be tough for Noah to get out of this one. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's gonna be pretty darn tough. I like the idea of pressure plus like a counter spell. Yep. Against this deck, that that is the way that I would try to fight back against Lotus Breach. I can certainly recognize that the deck is incredibly powerful, but it, to me, it, it strikes me as more of a. It can be a turn three deck, I think, sometimes. But here's a Boreal Grazer. That's timely, though the Serpent, I believe, does have Trample. Oh, yeah. Among all those keywords, there's a Blast Zone that'll come in from the Grazer. And now this is a Fae of Wishes. Two blockers is not a bad turn. It's not, it's still, Hughes is not really on a path to be able to combo out, but he might be able to survive this turn at least. Maybe get to a point, maybe get Blast Zone in the equation. I don't know. It's The, the Ghost Fire Blades along with the Mutavault is going to be a, really hard to manage that with the resources Hughes has available. So we got Reach, Trample, Protection from Multicolored. So if we put a Blade on here, it's a, so right now, let's see, 1, 1, 6, 6, 8, 8, 10, 10. He needs to come up with 13 Yep. to get over 7 points of blocking. I think he's going to come up a point short right now. So 10 minus 7 is 3, and then 4, 5. So, yeah, he, he's, got, he's got 12 right now. He's still got to – and he's got to put everything in front of the Serpent also. Mm -hmm. He can't afford the luxury of blocking Mutaval and keeping it around for a turn. All right, so well, this sets up lethal for next turn also, and he's down both of his blockers. Or a Wild Slash wins the game right now, which there does not appear to be one. So let's head back over to Hughes. Now, Blast Zone is on 1. The problem is the Mutaval. Yep. I think we're going to say that a lot this weekend. Yes, the, the problem, problem is, is the Mutaval. Yeah. He's got everything else covered. We've got everything else covered, but no answer Mutaval, and then that's that. All right, so Adam wins game number one here over Noah. Is an Insole a little too quick on the play with an Insole artifact, which is the goal certainly in this matchup. So we take a look at the sideboards. I know you've got Noah's in front of you, so I'll let you start there. One Anger of the Gods, one Fog, one Hour of Devastation, one Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, one Lost Legacy, one Natural State, one niv Mizzet Perun, one Thoughts Tome Scour, one Thought Distortion, one Underworld Breach, and one Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Those are targets for Fae of Wishes. The two ofs, Unravel the Aether and Ratchet Bomb, I think both excellent here and both likely to come in. On my side, I've got Aether Harvester. There's one of those. Two Bone Crusher Giants, two Disdainful Stroke. Two, excuse me, three Mystical Disputes, two Lava Coil, a Shadow Spear, three Tormod's Crypt, and a Hazret the Fervent. So if you want to go towards Graveyard Hate, Crypt is there. Yeah, I like the three copies of Tormod's Crypt, uh, and I think the uh, the Mystical Disputes are probably above the line to bring in also. I have to imagine those are fine. So you can get away from your two copies of Wild Slash. You probably want to leave in Trapnel Blast just, yep, just because it deals speed, so much. So yeah. much speed. And it answers Fae which is two in spots, which is a good, can be a good blocker. That's true. Stubborn Denial, I think you want to keep hanging out here in the deck. I think Emery can probably go a little too slow. I don't probably. think about that. Yeah. yeah, I think Emery is more for matchups that involve removal, and that's not really the thing here. I think there's a stray copy of Hazard hiding out here. That card can be quick, but it feels too like slow. four mana too, too, too slow. Too slow. Yeah. Also, I don't think if you're going to bring in reactive permission, like these counter spells, and there, there's a metallic rebuke and two stubborn Isles main deck, you don't want to tap out. Right, I think that's a really good point of, you know, when you're when you're bringing in counter spells, it sort of presupposes you want to leave up mana, and so the burden of proof to keep in cards that require you to tap out on your own turn is, is really high, and I think the Hazret's not that strong to begin with, so I, I would identify that one as well as one that should probably uh, be boarded out. All right, well, those are the options there for both players, and we're going to get ready here for our second game of competition between Lotus Breach and Is It In Soul. Remember, Lotus Breach is a deck that a lot of people have been talking about as being incredibly, incredibly powerful. Had a huge impact on players tour Phoenix. Haven't seen it a lot here on the SCG Tour, though I imagine we'll see a decent amount of it here this weekend. But how will it perform now that players have had the opportunity to play against it more and figure out the best way to maybe hate against the deck, which seems like it should be doable. Well, I think that a lot of the level one interaction is varying degrees of effectiveness. 
But it's greater than zero. Okay. I mean, you can, a clock plus Thoughtseize plus a Counterspell or whatever is not a bad mixture of cards to have against this deck. So I think you can, you can sort of interact with it that way of just playing with good interactive magic cards. I think there's the second level, which is sideboarding in particular cards that are supposed to interact the right way. I have found that path to be a lot less fruitful. So I would start from a base of just trying to play with, you know, negates and thought seizes and a clock. Um, and that's essentially what Corey Burkhart was able to do in, in route to winning that tournament. Yeah. Corey Burkhart again winning Players Tour Phoenix with Demir Inverter. We have seen Demir Inverter show up here on the SD Tour, certainly in the hands of Peter Ingram, who I know is here this weekend. Mm -hmm. Saw him at the airport yesterday. Peter really diving into professional magic this year. Had a pretty good year last year, but he's already off to a great start here in 2020. So I imagine we will see him some in the future match area as well here this weekend as these players will put a card to the bottom on their mulligans. They've kept their six-card hands. It's a Yavamaya Coast for Hughes. In Island, an old Bobo, Bomac oh, Courier yeah. for Adam. Thespian Stage into Sylvan Scrying will allow Hughes to find a copy of Lotus Field. One of the namesake cards of this deck. Incredibly difficult land to interact with. you got to pay the cost with Lotus Field to get it going. Sacrificing two lands. As there is Bomac Courier. But it is an incredibly powerful card. Tormod's Crypt. The passing of the turn. Looks like we're going to see Hughes float a little bit of mana. Now there is Lotus Breach. Remember, it does enter the battlefield tapped as well. Hidden Strings can untap it, among other things. This is Vizier of Tumbling Sand. So, untap the Lotus Breach and draw a card. Now Lotus Breach will tap for three. And Mystical Dispute looks like it's going to take care of the Fey of Wishes. So, we head back over to Adam. So my opinion here is that Tormod's Crypt can be effective on a very short timeline mm -hmm. and not very effective over a longer timeline. So there's still a lot of pressure, I think, on Watchman Moses to try to end this game as quickly as he can. He can't hold off forever uh, once Hughes kind of has his shop set up. He can win a short game, not a long game most likely. Uh, and right now he's only attacking for one. So you've got to find some way to speed this up a little bit. Botanical Sanctum is the land, and there's the battlefield untapped conveniently, though it is Hughes' fourth land drop of the game. Only one other land on the battlefield there in Lotus Field. And now there is going to be granted actually a second copy of Mystical Dispute, a card you felt Adam should bring in, and it's been very impactful. Yeah, it doesn't catch everything, but a lot of the key engine cards, uh, you know, Fae of Wishes, Poor of the Pages, they are blue. And uh, honestly, if you can get enough pressure on the battlefield on turns one and two, it's not the worst to just leave up uh, three mana and keep them off some key spell, even if it's not blue. And so Artifact's going to go on Dark Cell Citadel. That'll join Bomac Courier into the red zone. He's going to fall down to nine. And given that Adam has countered two copies of Granted, you got to wonder, can Noah actually come back in this game? Now, there's a copy of Underworld Breach, and do you make your move with Tormod's Crypt now with well, a red mana floating? What is the most threatening thing to be able to do out of that graveyard right now? There's a Vizier of Tumbling Sands down there. There's two copies of Fey of Wishes. And a couple of lands, I mean, and a Sylvan Scrying. I mean, there's not really much. And remember, if Hughes doesn't get anything out of this turn with the Underworld Breach, he has sacrifice at the end of turn. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you put the pressure on him next turn. To yeah. But Hughes is also down to two cards in hand. So what could even a follow-up look like? Okay, he's just going to play, it yeah. looks like, Fae of Wishes. Good patience there from, from Washburn Moses there to uh, not pull the trigger too much on that Tormod script because that was not that threatening of a turn. Yeah. So Underworld Breach just allows a 1-4 to join the battlefield. Now here comes Bomac Courier and Dark Soul Citadel again. Going to block the Dark Soul Citadel. Bomac Courier has five cards underneath it right now. And Wasburn Moses is going to just pass the turn back. So Lotus Breach not terribly impressive in these couple of games. Here's another copy of Underworld Breach. The last one was pretty bad. Yeah, if you didn't fight over the last one, I can't imagine fighting over this one. You've seen Adam's ability to interact with Noah in a meaningful way. And Noah is just kind of saying, you know, I, I just, another one for, I guess. Play a Temple of Mystery, Scry, top card. Looks like it might become the bottom card now. It is. And 
I'll tell you what, I know Lotus Breach is a lot more powerful than this, so if this is your first time seeing the deck, you are seeing kind of the low end of it, but I will also give Adam credit. He has interacted with it in two meaningful ways with those yeah. mystical disputes. He presented an extremely fast kill on the play game number one, and mm -hmm. then post-board uh, eventually sped up the clock with this and Soul Artifact, but so much disruption in two mystical disputes and a Tormod's Crypt that Washburn Moses hasn't even had to avail himself of. Steve Vince is going to enter the battlefield on tap. Bomac Courier has six cards underneath it, so the ability to draw some new ones is what Washburn Moses does have. Looks like we're going to see a couple of cards drawn here for Noah. But not all that impressive as a couple of cards head to the graveyard as well. The follow-up is Emporial Grazer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another Lotus Field. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure there's some top deck here that, that Hughes does have that will probably be pretty good when you do have two Lotus Fields on the battlefield. But I'll it's, tell you this. It's much, poor I'm, over the pages. Okay. That's the starting point to, uh, to let it go. Okay. Being able to survive this turn and then also combo out through the Tormod script and draw the exact right card. It's asking you a lot, but it is possible. All right. Boro Grace was going to get in front of the Dark Steel Citadel. Bomac Courier now has seven cards underneath it. Draw a card here. Will Noah Hughes he needs to draw a good one. Here's six mana. Six blue. All right. Hidden Strings. Untap these. More mana. No mana. Cute. Okay. Very cute. You're going to die now is what's going to happen. That's going to do it. Adam Wasbermos is going to win this game and match here over Noah Hughes.